Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to be continuing with Unit 7, this time Sections 4 and 5. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for 24 years, and I want to make sure that you get the score you want to get on the AP exam, so make sure that you're subscribed, that way you don't miss a thing, and hit that thumbs up button if you learn something from my videos. I would really appreciate it. Well, in Section 4, we're going to be learning about how to calculate an equilibrium constant. Now we just barely touched on that in the last section, but we'll try another example with this. Here's another reaction. It says for the reaction shown here at 300 kelvins, a mixture of N2 and O2 react and are allowed to attain equilibrium. At equilibrium, NO equals 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth molar, while N2 and O2 are both 1.00 molar. Calculate the equilibrium constant, Kc, at 300 kelvins. So once again, the first thing we have to do is write the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. So just like we learned in the last video, it's products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So that's going to be Kc equals concentration of NO squared all over N2 times O2 concentration. So now once we have that expression written, now we can just plug and chug and solve for the Kc. So NO is given to us here in the problem as 1.22 times 10 to the negative fifth. And of course we have to square that. In the denominator, we have N2 and O2, and those are both given to us as 1.00 molar. So I will plug both of those in, and now we just key this into our calculator, and we should get an answer that Kc equals 1.49 times 10 to the negative tenth. So that's the answer. Once again, like we said in the last video, equilibrium constants do not have units, and so don't worry about trying to to get a unit out of that because, well, there are none. Now, one detail about this that I want to point out to you that I didn't mention in the last video. Notice the temperature. Some students get caught up on this temperature here. We have 300 kelvins, and some people think we got to do something with that. We don't have to worry about that. The reason that temperature is in the problem is to confirm that the equilibrium constant is what it is. Okay, because an equilibrium constant is only valid for a reaction at a specific temperature. If you change the temperature, you change the equilibrium constant. And so if we were, you know, at maybe trying to calculate this at 350 kelvins, well, we'd have a different set of numbers here, and these numbers would not work. So that's why they, they throw that temperature in there, not to confuse you, just to let you know that we are confirming that, that this equilibrium will actually be the right constant. So that's how you solve for an equilibrium constant, just basically plug and chug into the equation. Now, in section five, we're going to talk about what the meaning of the equilibrium constant is. Because we worked an example in this video, and we also worked an example in the last video. You might remember that we, have, we had two equilibrium constants that were very different from each other. Sometimes we'll have a very large equilibrium constant. Uh, in the last example, in fact, I'll just pull this up again. You might notice that this equilibrium constant was a very small number. 10 to the minus 10th is an extremely small number. Well, in the last video, we had a large equilibrium constant. Now, what I mean by large is it's much larger than 1. So maybe something like 100 or larger than that. Well, if you have a very large number, that means that we have a relatively large number in the numerator because products are written on top, and a relatively smaller number in the denominator because reactants are written on the bottom. So that means we have a lot of product and not much reactant. That's what it means if you have a very large number like we had in the, the last video. In chemistry sometimes we say that equilibrium lies to the right if that's the case. Lies to the right. And why do we say that? Well when you write out an equation you always write the products on the right side of the arrow. So that's just kind of a little, uh, I guess, a secret code or like a little uh, way of saying that. 
equilibrium lies to the right. Now, in the example that we just did, you will recall that we had a very small equilibrium constant, something like 10 to the minus 10th. If you ever have a very small equilibrium constant, like you know, 10 to the minus 2, you know, 0.01 or, or smaller than that, I'd call that fairly small, that means that you're going to have a lot of reactant and not much product. And we say that's the case because you know if you don't have a whole lot of product that means the product is written in the numerator and that's going to be a small number and the reactants are written in the denominator and that's a relatively large number so that means that when you divide it out you have a small number so in that case we'd say equilibrium lies to the left and and hopefully that makes sense because when you write and equal, uh, when you write a balanced equation, rather, you always write the reactants on the left side of the arrow. So that denotes that you have a lot of reactants, not much product. If we take a look at these two numbers that we worked with earlier, uh, here was the example that we did just a couple minutes ago, a very s small equilibrium constant. If you look back at the problem, you'll see, indeed, we had a lot of reactant. But the product concentration was very small, like 10 to the minus fifth or something like that, compared to 1.00 in the case of the reactants. If you look back to the notes from the last video, if you have your workbook or you, you can watch that video again, I suppose, you can see that in that other example, we had a lot of product, not much reactant left over. So that's why we had a very large number for the equilibrium constant. Hope you learned something about the, the, the meaning of the equilibrium constant and also how to work these problems. If you learned something, please slam that thumbs up button. Join me in the next video in Unit 7, Section 6, where we're going to learn how to manipulate reactions and how that changes the equilibrium constant. I'm Jeremy Krug. Join me in that next video. Thanks for watching.